Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to another Sandbox Saturday. This is the series in which I get myself out of my usual career mode, get myself into Sandbox mode, and try to accomplish something. Um, and like last episode, this episode as well is going to be connected to what I'm doing in career mode. People that have uh, been following my career mode may recognize this particular vehicle. It is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that Val a few episodes ago attempted to land. Well, eventually did land, but it was kind of a hard landing on top of the vehicle assembly building in order to satisfy the requirements of a contract. Um, it has, I've done, the only thing I've modified to that vehicle that Val flew is I've added a battery down here and some solar panels so I don't have to worry about electricity while I go and do what I want to do with this. Otherwise, it's exactly the same vehicle. And what I amply demonstrated during that episode is that my ability to do powered landings, especially on curb and surface, well, leaves a little bit to be desired. And in fact, even my most recent career mode episode also further exemplified that fact. So that got me thinking about creating a hover script, a KOS program to help me hover and ascend and descend in a controlled manner. And so this, what this episode is going to be about, I want to build me a KOS program that allows me to hover at a particular altitude and allow me in a controlled way to either ascend or descend and eventually soft land somewhere, anywhere. That is my goal. So for those people that would like to see a little bit of coding, whether you've ever done any kind of coding or programming ever in your life at all, would like to learn a little bit more about KOS, or perhaps you know a lot about KOS, but really enjoy watching somebody like me fumble their way through and fail instead of failing yourself. <laughs> That's, but anyway, that is going to be the goal. And if you're interested in that, this is going to be the episode for you. So we're going to open up our KOS terminal. Now I did get started already on a script. I showed it a couple of episodes ago in my career mode series. So that's going to be our starting point. So why don't we start by taking a look at what I already have. So I'm going to switch to zero. That is called the archive volume, which is really the hard drive of my computer where all of these various files are being stored. And we're going to edit. I have a program called Hover. We're gonna edit Hover, and we're gonna see what I've written so far. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna grab this. I wanna shrink this window as much as I can, and I want to expand this window as much as I can. And I've gone back and forth on how I'm going to do the editing for all of this, and I decided I'm going to use the uh, editing tool that's built in with KOS so that it's all in-game and you can see this all on the screen. I wouldn't recommend, if you're doing your own coding, doing it this way. I mean, this is a pretty limited editor. I myself use Notepad++. Uh, I find it, for my purposes, just a fine editor. It's a free download. It's open source software. It's really, really easy to use. And in fact, on the screen next to this one, I do have it open in case editing here gets too frustrating, and I'll record that, and we'll kind of, you know, edit it all together, and it'll all get fixed in post <laughs> in the end. But why don't we start by just taking a look at what I have so far. So I have a whole bunch of, this is just a description. The first half of it actually is nothing. These are comment, uh, these are just comments. Uh, KOS doesn't care about them. Uh, let's get started. I have a thrust setting for setting my thrust. Thrust can go, the, the and then the throttle is set to thrust setting. Thrust goes from zero to one. One is full thrust, zero is no thrust, and <clears throat> any decimal in between is whatever appropriate fraction that's going to be. So the throttle is going to be locked to this thrust setting. The lock command means that every time I change thrust setting, the throttle on this ship will change appropriately. So later on in the program, if I change thrust setting, it'll all change. Then I did a programming no-no. I'll definitely want to fix this, but it was just such a simple thing to do. I created an infinite loop. Uh, infinite loops are typically not a very good idea. Uh, but what I have is until false, an until loop works is that until the condition here is true, 
it will keep doing this particular loop between these two curly braces. False, of course, is never true, so this is going to go on forever. There's only three lines in here. One is it's calculating the force of gravity, so it's setting the force of gravity, Fg, to be 9.8 times the mass of this vehicle. So it calculates the force of gravity on the vehicle. Number two is it's calculating what I call the vertical angle. What it's attempting to calculate is what is the angle between the way that the ship is oriented to the actual vertical up. Right now, the angle is zero. And it's going by the orientation of this probe body. That's the control part. And that probe body is pointing straight up. So how is it performing that calculation? It's using a KOS function called VANG, which is, stands for vertical angle. VANG takes two parameters separated by a comma, and these two have to be vectors. Um, you don't have to understand vector arithmetic. That's actually what this does for you. But the two vectors that it takes is it looks at the ship, looks at which way is the ship facing, and takes what's called the forward vector. That's just the vector from the probe body going straight up. That's it. Then it takes a look at what's called the up vector. That is a constant that is uh, built into KOS. The up vector is, as you might not be surprised, is what actually is up. And that will remain the same um, because it's relative to curve in which way is up. And then it's going to calculate the angle between those two. And it needs that because in the next step, it's calculating. Let's look at what's after the two. It's taking the force of gravity that it calculated up here dividing it by the cosine of the angle that it calculated here, and then dividing that by how much thrust this thing has available. Okay, And what that will do is calculate a decimal that should be what the thrust setting should be set at, so that the thrust setting exactly balances off the force of gravity and regardless of the orientation of my probe body. So let's watch this thing in, a in action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna queue up a run command to run hover, but I don't wanna run hover with it sitting on the ground because it actually isn't gonna do anything. So we're gonna take Jebediah and we're gonna take him for a little bit of a journey up. Oh, those engines. Slow down a little bit. Get it so, so it's sort of kinda hovering. like that then we'll go go to here hit return and now KOS is just taking control of the hover command okay so right now it's stuck in this infinite loop it's constantly calculating the force of gravity on the ship and calculating what's the appropriate thrust to balance off now you can see we are kind of going up a little bit but that's because when I engage this I was already going up so if the force of the engine exactly matches the force of the gravity, then the, the uh, vessel, notice it gets tilt, tilting forward a little bit, um, will continue on at a constant velocity. If it wasn't for the atmosphere, it wouldn't be slowing down at all. But it's going up just very slightly. So that's one of the things I want to change. I want to give the ability to kind of say, you know, go down a little bit, go up a little bit. The other thing that it is doing already, too, is if I tilt, a little bit to one side. Take a look at the thrust vector, or the... Oh, I just... What happened there? Well, that's interesting. Well, obviously, Jeb is going to crash. Well, let's watch the explosion because... Hey, Jeb lived. Jeb is sitting... Okay, why... Why on earth did the engine just quit? Hmm, it didn't do that before. Oh, wait, what happened here? I got some notes. Tried to push infinity into the stack. It's interesting. Let's wait. Let's resume flight. At line 17, that is actually this line right here, the second last line. Oh, it must have run into an infinity. Dividing by available thrust. That can never be zero. That didn't do that before. I guess the cosine of the angle could be zero if this angle were a 90, which it never got to. Well, that's very weird. Okay, let's try reverting flight. 
to launch. We'll just try that again. I know, let's actually, before I get into doing anything else, let's try and clean some things up. And maybe that will fix this issue anyway. Edit, edit uh, hover. So let's, I'm gonna try and clean a couple of things up here. All right, so a couple of things I want to clean up. Number one is I want to um, wait. This might be part of the issue. I want to put a wait command in there. So this is going to wait for one tenth of a second at the end of each of these loops. So it's going to do these calculations every tenth of a second from a what we observe and that shouldn't really make too much of a difference but from uh, the computing end it's not whipping through this loop as fast as it can maybe that's part of the reason why we ran into this issue now the other thing I want to do is I want to change this 9.8 uh, instead of being a hard-coded number I want to actually see now is if I can get it KOS to actually pull that number out now I can't get the surface gravity but what I can get if I take this out is I can uh, refer to a structure called body by the way KOS um, all the commands are case insensitive whether you use uppercase or lowercase so I tend to use um, uppercase for most of my KOS commands and then lowercase for everything else I don't know to me that's a personal style choice <laughs> so I'm gonna look at the body and from the body that's the body in which we're orbiting in this case Kerbin I want to use the body because I think this will make this more generic so if I'm around other bodies it should calculate this for me anyway I'm gonna take the mu <coughs> oh, and mu there we go mu is the excuse me the um, what's called the gravitational parameter and what it, it it's just a parameter you know what I don't want to get into physics of all of that but it's a way of calculating uh, it's a way of doing some calculations about it but the the uh, the, the uh, gravitation of this particular body um, I'm gonna take that and I'm pretty sure if I take that and divide it by the body's radius, which is the radius of the body squared. Squared, I can do squared. Squared, I think that calculates G for me and will calculate it much more accurately and I think it will also be uh, more generic. And I'm pretty sure, I'm just looking at my KOS documentation site. I'll put a link to the documentation site. I, yeah, I do believe I can call all that stuff. So I'm going to save this. And we're going to, again, come to Jeb. See if this thing works. So, engage the engines. Throttle up. There he goes. Throttle down a little bit. altitude. There it goes. Okay, let's run hover. Let's run hover. There we go. Okay, so now KOS is in control of the throttle. And this is what I was trying to show before. I'm noticing he's tilting forward. I should probably move Jim's seat back. Um, if I go a little this way, it should be adjusting the throttle. Yes, it is. See how it increases the throttle to keep me from sh from falling downwards? It's increasing the amount of throttle to keep the vertical component of thrust the same to offset the force of gravity. No, this seems to be working well still. It's working just as well as it did before, but what I like about it is this is now more generic than just putting in the 9.8. Wow, it did it again. That tried to push infinity into the stack 
and it did it at the same point. I think I know what's going on. I think I know what's going on. I think I know what's going on. I think it's something stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> it's always something stupid. Isn't debugging fun? These tanks. Oh, when I copied this file over to my sandbox mode, the craft file, I had jet engines on it. And we'll get back to getting jet engines on it because I am really interested in whether this will fly with jet engines. But I forgot to put the oxidizer back and then I put a tank on, uh, that's all too confused. But I think that was the source of that confusion. One thing, what else do I not, there's something else that was, yes, right here. This body radius, why don't I add to that my altitude? This is the altitude above, if I can spell it right, <laughs> sea level. And this will actually now modify the force of gravity um, as you go up because of course your gravitational field constant goes down as you get further and further away from the center. Now to be honest for this vehicle considering how re you know relative to the center of Kerbin it doesn't actually go up that far. I doubt it'll make any kind of a difference. But again to make this more generic I kinda like. Now what I want to do is I actually want to save this and I want to run this just one more time Okay, this seems to be working well. I think I've gone past the point where this is going to crap. I'm going to go around the vehicle assembly building. <laughs> ah, calm down. There we go. Ah, notice how it's just pumping that thrust. Um, one of the things that this thing could use is better reaction wheels. The only reaction wheels it has, I've noticed that it couldn't increase thrust fast enough. Uh-oh, we're coming down. We're coming down, my friend. All right, and oh, Jeb went for. I'm sure he's fine. He is absolutely fine. He he just bailed out. He meant to do that. <laughs> okay, we're going to revert our flight back to launch, and now we're going to see what we can do to improve on this. So, what I would like to do is give the ability to put user input so that means as this is flying I can hit a key on my keyboard that will just increase this thrust setting a little bit and another key that will decrease the thrust setting a little bit and then another key that uh, will put it back into hover mode so that's what I'm looking at I want to use the up cursor key to increase throttle the lower cursor key to um, to decrease throttle and I'm gonna use the home key to go back to hover mode here's what we're gonna try I'm gonna get to here and we're gonna put in a set command and we're gonna call this CH for character and that's going to be set to, and it's the terminal, that is the terminal in which we operate KOS. And we're gonna take input, and we're going to take, we're going to call getchar. And getchar is a method that will get whatever character I happen to most recently have hit. And if that character equals uh, a, I gotta look at the different constants they have <laughs> and make sure I got this right. But there is up cursor one, that is the arrow key. So up. C U R S cursor one. That is the up arrow key. If that is true, oh for goodness sakes, I want to. What do I want to do? I want to increase the thrust setting. No, I got a much better idea. We're gonna create another variable here. Set thrust 
adjust. And again, start that at one. You'll see why one in just a little bit. Two, one. That's going to be its default setting. Two, that's just for consistency. <laughs> And oh, I noticed I did that with twos all the way down. Okay, let's go with lowercase. This is just me being pedantic now. <laughs> two, one. Two. And then down here, two. Actually, let's put a space between these two so that because there's kind of two different sections there. Okay. So, um,. If I press cursor 1, I want to increase thrust by 10% every single time. So to do that, I'm going to take the set, thrust, adjust, to, yeah, let's try thrust, adjust, plus 0.1. So that will mean that if every time I push the this is the idea whether it works or not we'll see every time I push the up cursor it's gonna add 0.1 to this thrust adjust variable so for instance if I press it once it goes from 1 to 1.1 and then in the thrust setting we're going to add yeah let's make it a completely separate line set thrust setting to thrust setting times thrust adjust. Okay, so you see how this sort of works. When the thrust adjust is 1, it's just going to multiply by 1 and that doesn't change the thrust setting at all. But if I add a point 0.1 to it, this now is going to be 1.1, which increases the thrust setting 10%. And if I press the up cursor key again, then it should be at point 0.2. And again, you can you can follow how that, and then it'll go up 20%, etc. If the character equals a down cursor, I would assume that's exactly what it is. Good thing for predictability. Down cursor one, I'm assuming. Yep. And as I type in the blocks for the other controls, I think this would be a good point for me to point out that, and I'm hoping this is obvious, uh, coding is by no stretch of the imagination my profession. I can best be described as a hobbyist and not a particularly experienced hobbyist at that. Uh, yeah, my, my skill sets, uh, well, let's just say this one's down the list, but it is something that I do enjoy doing. And I also wanted to show kind of the process of coding, especially for those people that have never coded before. That there's you, The old expression is you spend 10% of your time coding and 90% of your time debugging. And so I wanted to show a little bit of that debugging process. But anyway, why don't we cut to me finishing this off and seeing how this turns out. I don't know, what do you think? You think this will work? Let's save this. We'll give her a go. Now this time I'm going to keep it on the ground and we're just going to run hover. Oh, what didn't it like? I guess I should not. I should not be surprised by this. It's probably something silly, something dumb. Okay, let's let's run let's run hover again. Syntax. Uh, syntax unexpected token that found at the end of line 24. Do I need the curly braces? I would think I need the curly braces. Or even if I don't need the curly Oh, I don't have. It's not the curly brace, it's the periods. I forgot periods at the end of my statements because I did something dumb. Oh, 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 oh. Run hover, okay, unidentified up cursor one. You know what, I think I know why, yeah. I think it 
it, I need to give this some context here. I think this needs to be from the terminal input up cursor one. I think that's what it's not liking. So seeing this up cursor one, and I'm sure it would have given an error for these two as well, it's seeing them out of context and now I'm telling it, no, it, it's part of your structural system. Go look in terminal, look in the input section, you'll find an up cursor one. Okay, there's the hover mode. Now, I think I have to, I think if I do down arrow, yeah, that, that's just that. So if I go to here though, this should, yeah, that increases the throttle. That decreases throttle. I think I need to make my jumps less. Now, I'm gonna actually do something here. Is I'm gonna set the increment, I'm gonna call it increment to 0 0.05 period. And then down here where I have these point ones, I'm going to change that to increment. And then that way I can start playing around with how much I, I found the throttle just jumped too much with the 10%. So this is now going to jump the throttle 5%. But now I got this number in one location. So if I want to change this into the future in the future, um, then uh, I can, you know, just do that. Now I also realized in doing that I really need a kill throttle option. So if terminal input end cursor, I guess that makes sense. Actually let's set the initial thrust to thrust to zero. That might be a better plan and then that way the thrust is at zero when you start this thing. What I want to do is if I press the up arrow, I should be getting some thrust. Yeah. And another th should be. So each push of my arrow increases thrust by 5%. And I want to do this just till he starts to lift. And then I want to hit the home key. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now I'm going to press home and get out of here and just control attitude. Oh, wait, I'm not. There we go. Now I can control attitude. Down thrust. Home. You know what I need is some sort of feedback mechanism in here. That's what I'm thinking about. It's weird. I have to hit the terminal window in order to control throttle. And I have to... I have to be out of the terminal win window to control attitude. So that's a little bit awkward. If I had action groups... Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if you can... I might be getting ahead of myself, but action groups might be a way of controlling this because you can get it to notice action groups and maybe to behave in such a certain way if a certain action group is toggled. Ah, I don't have... Oh, dear. Okay. I know what I need next. I want to clear screen. I want to give me some sort of feedback on um, where my thrust setting is, okay? So what I want to do is now print, save that, and that will tell you whether you're above or below or whatever hover. But I'm getting suspect of my hover calculation because it see, feels like, let's take this altitude out of here. That was cute and all, but I, I, I'm, I'm worried that it's actually messing something up. Because I had it in hover, yet we were clearly accelerating upwards. See, if I hit now, just home. And I mean, I work. <laughs> but I'll hit home again. Hovers has definitely got some upness to it. 
Force of gravity is mu divided by the radius of the body squared times the ship's mass. That absolutely should be right. What if I just fudged it? It seems to be always a little bit big. So what if I put in a fudge factor? So set fudge <laughs> to 0 0.98 and then I'm gonna go to here and I'm gonna go fudge times FG oh definitely okay that is I think better I don't know why it's better I don't know why I need that fudge factor at all I'm going to attribute it to the gremlin of floating point arithmetic. <laughs> Either way though, this worked so well. Well, I got a little bit more ambitious. You know what I'm going for, don't you? Let's go back. The last time I tried this, things didn't go well. Where's that? There. going up, so down, one, two. We're gonna run out of fuel. Hover. Attitude control. We're coming down kinda hard. Coming down kinda hard. Cut it. Oh my god! <laughs> that was the best job I ever did. So there's just absolutely no question that that script helped. I think I need to play a little bit more with the fudge factor. I feel there's still a little bit of uppiness to that. And a bit more playing around got me settling on a fudge factor of 0 0.9735. And while I was at it, I also changed that infinite until loop that I mentioned at the very beginning I wasn't happy with. And instead of saying until false, I changed it to until I hit the delete key. So now if I hit the delete key, it dumps out of the loop and the program ends. It gives me a much cleaner way of ending this particular program. And this gave me something that I was pretty happy with. So it's time to step up the game. It works out really well for rocket engines. What about jet engines? So off came the rocket engines. On went a quartet of Juno engines. This is going to be more challenging because jet engines take time to spool up and spool down when you adjust the thrust, making them much more challenging, but a much more practical vehicle. This vehicle will have a lot more range. And I think to really make this work, I need to get into action groups. I need to move, not have to always click on the terminal uh, window in order to put in inputs to adjust thrust. If I get action groups going, then I don't have to do this clicking back and forth thing, which will make controlling this much, much more easier. But, you know, I think we've already got a lot going on in this episode, and given where the length of this video is at, I think I'm going to put off that discussion till next episode. Also, next episode, we'll talk about a KOS structure called a trigger, which will be really useful for us but all of that is going to have to be for the future in the meantime i thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time